The dark web is a curious place to be. There are hundreds of accounts of people getting into trouble or seeing things they rather would not or just buying illegal things off the dark web. But the reality isn't really as far as from the stories. It may not be exactly alike, but it's definitely not too different. In this video, we're going over the dark web and telling you how you can browse it. Now, if you haven't, check out our previous video in which we take a deeper look into the dark web and how it works. The dark web can be a dangerous place and if you don't know what you're doing, things can get out of hand pretty quickly. A wrong click can land you in places you might not want to be in and we're not responsible if you get into any trouble wandering off on the dark web, with the law enforcement or otherwise. As explained in our last video, the dark web uses the Tor network to work and remain anonymous. This makes Tor browser the default option for a vast majority of people and for a good reason. It's widely available, free to use and very easy to get up and running. Other options include browsers that run on the Tor network like the Subgraph OS, Waterfox and even Firefox if you can set it up and route it to use the Tor network. So before we can get started with browsing the dark web, we need to first have a browser that can browse it. So I'm just going to go ahead and download Tor. Go to the official Tor website which is torproject.org and just download the corresponding setup file. You can download it for Android, for Linux, for OS X or even for Windows. Now that we have the setup file downloaded, we can just go ahead and uh, follow the instructions and it will automatically install Tor for our machine. And I'll just click finish and Tor should automatically start up. So now if you're in a country that censors Tor, China, Egypt, Turkey or any other middle country in the Middle East, uh, you might want to configure Tor to use uh, network settings and adjust them accordingly. But since I'm not, I'm just going to go ahead and click on connect. And then it should automatically establish a Tor circuit and connect to it. So by default, Tor is going to search the clear web. Um, so let's find an .onion link website because since the dark web isn't indexed, we need to search for the sites that we want to access. So I'm going to look for something called the hidden wiki. Now there are alternatives to it that you can use. You can use the hiddenwiki.com. You can use the hiddenwiki.org. And you can just use onionlinks.onion as well. So now as you can see, I have uh, an entire directory of uh, dot onion urls that i can start browsing the dark web with and it's really that simple for example uh, i've got marketplace financials i've got hidden service lists and search engines so this is the onion wiki which is another alternative to the hidden wiki um, now here's another site that apparently sells you credit cards. So for 90 US dollars, I can get roughly 10 cards that have credit ranging from 1000 to 5000 US dollars. This is scary. And uh, you're going to have to go and register here to be able to buy anything. Note that most of these sites require a user account but won't ask for an email when you make one. Also be very, very, very sure of what you're doing and where you're going. All it takes is one wrong click to get into trouble with the law or have your computer explode with malware. As we've said in our last video, the dark web can be a dangerous place. Not just the criminal activity, you can easily be scammed, get infected by malware or just see something you'd rather not. So while venturing out in the dark isn't harmful, be careful of where you go. If you liked the video, consider subscribing, give us a thumbs up, press the bell icon and tell us in the comments below if you've ever been to dark web. If you want to know more about cybersecurity or tech in general, visit our website Candido Technology, follow us on social media at Candido Technology and we'll see you in the next video.